All right, guys, let's go over the RTD temperature detector lab. So you'll notice the, the first few pages just to give you a little bit of a synopsis on the RTD. So a little bit of background here. And on the first page, it's basically telling you that um, nickel, copper, and platinum um, have specific ranges in which uh, as the temperature changes, then you're going to get specific changes in resistance for each of those different types of metals. The nominal resistance, so they're telling you that um, with these guys there are specific resistances that you'll have for each of your RTDs, but they are plus or minus a certain percent because it depends on different manufacturers and depends on when and where they were made. Okay, what is an RTD? The RTD is essentially just a piece of wire that is wrapped around a ceramic core. All it does is as you heat up that piece of wire, like any piece of conductor that you use, when you heat up that metal, then it's going to change its resistance and it's gonna be the exact same as if we had a piece of copper conductor. As you heat up an RTD, the resistance changes, exactly the same as your copper conductors, meaning that as you increase the heat, you're gonna increase the resistance. Okay, that's a standard, in this case, platinum sensing wire. That platinum wire is wound around a ceramic core. And then there is a stainless steel housing on the outside, which allows the heat to transfer easily from the outside protective sheath onto the inside platinum wire. The ceramic provides a good uh, mounting piece for the platinum um, and then allows that temperature so the, the thing that it's wound around isn't going to change the temperature of the platinum. So it gives it a stable mounting position um, and stable temperature change on that conductor. You can see that there are two, con on these RTDs, there are two conductors that are coming out of these guys, um, similar to the ones that we're going to hook up today. Okay, The one that we're going to be using, the usual nominal resistance of platinum RTDs is 100 ohms at 0 degrees Celsius. So we'll see what the temperature is when we put it into uh, the ice bath and whether it gets close to uh, that 100 ohm. So specific resistance values are going to be seen at specific temperatures. Okay, the RTDs can measure between 100, 102, sorry, minus 200 degrees Celsius to 650 degrees Celsius. So they're not, they're not great for open flames. They're better for just taking standard temperatures uh, but not really, really high temperatures. You can see that the max you can max out this RTD would be 650. At that point, you're cooking the, the insides of the actual unit. If you're going to get into higher temperatures, you're going to be using a thermocouple. Applications for the RTDs, um, they're used all over the place. Air conditioning, refrigeration, food processing, um, sometimes stoves and grills. Uh, oftentimes, it's a thermocouple there as well. Um, plastics processing, petrochemicals, microelectronics, um, any type of flow measurements are also going to make use of an RTD. So like if you're taking a flow measurement, you're going to look at the volumetric flow and then you'll have an RTD mounted in the duct or the piping system in order to get the mass flow of whatever liquid is flowing through that piping system. Okay, advantages, it's a linear oper operating range, so it gives you a linear output, so as you get a um, more temperature, you're going to get a corresponding increase in resistance. You've got a pretty wide temperature range, um, interchangeable over the wide range, good stability at higher temperatures as well. Uh, disadvantages, um, it has low sensitivity, they cost more than thermocouples. Um, now that in, could be an argument there because uh, thermocouples, if you're getting into extensions on these thermocouples, the, the couplings for thermocouples and thermocouple wire is quite expensive. Uh, but their initial cost is higher. There's no point sensing, um, and they're affected by shock and vibration. So this is the chart that we're going to be using for this lab. Our, P our uh, RTDs are going to be PT1000. So meaning that you can see right here at uh, zero degrees, it's going to give you a thousand ohms. At any other temperature, sorry, my hand is kind of waving here. They're a little bit stable here. So. At any other temperature around there, you can see that the resistance is going to decrease below 1,000 if we're below zero degrees, and then start to increase linearly 
uh, from 1,000 all the way up to, let's see, this guy uh, for a PT-1000. They've got the chart going to uh, 220, and then up here, this is our decimal places. So 220.9 degrees would be 1,864 ohms. So as the temperature increases, you can see that there's a linear increase in the resistance. All right, your next page is going to walk you through uh, the calibration of the, the TPI 312C pocket digital thermometer. So that's this bad boy right here. So uh, right now I've got it in Celsius, and it says that if you're looking through the, uh, the instructions there, if you were in Fahrenheit, then in the off setting, then you, all you have to do is just hold this button down for a few seconds, then you can see that it switches back and forth between Fahrenheit and Celsius. For our labs, we're going to be do, doing Celsius. So again, in the off position, you hold it down for a few seconds, and it changes from Fahrenheit to Celsius. Okay, and then as soon as you let it go, then it tells you the temperature of your ambient air around you. Okay, so next thing it gives we've got in the lab is a crude diagram here showing us the meter. The meter seems to be on ohmic setting. And then we've got the RTD, and you can see that it's a resistance, and then it's got that arrow that is uh, going through it here. So you can see this arrow here. That arrow is denoting that it's a variable resistance. So let's get the meter set up exactly like this, and we'll see uh, what the resistance value is. It says, uh, configure the digital multimeter for resistance measurement, and then record the resistance of the RTD at room temperature. All right, guys, so we said that we were using a PT-1000. So let me just uh, see if I can center in here. So this is a, the manufacturer is Danfoss, and we're using a PT-1000 RTD. Uh, so inside of here, so there's our stainless steel housing. Inside of there is a ceramic piece, and then we have a piece of platinum wire that is wound around the ceramic. And as soon as the, the temperature heats up this stainless steel, the heat is transferred over to the platinum. And then on this RTD, this is a two-wire RTD that we have reconfigured to give us these jumpers so that we can place them right into the meter there. So we were asked to take a, a resistance reading. So we're going to take this guy, change it over to resistance setting. And we'll let it stabilize here for a few seconds. It looks like at this point it's at 1,096, 1,097 ohms. You can see that if I grab onto this RTD, then over time, it's going to heat up. Maybe my hands, there we go. My hands are a little bit too cold. So you can see that as I heat up the RTD, the resistance is going to linearly increase with that increase in temperature that I'm providing to the RTD. So I'll let her go, let it stabilize again. And then we'll double check the value that we have for our ambient temperature against the chart for the PT-1000. All right, guys. So, uh, I wouldn't suggest uh, grabbing onto the RTD. After I grabbed onto it, it took a long time for it to settle out uh, and get back to the ambient temperature. So unless you like watching paint dry, uh, don't put your hands on the RTD at this point. So let's see, we got a temperature of 26 degrees in the room based on our digital thermometer. And we're at 26 degrees Celsius. And then the resistance that I'm reading right now is 1,099 ohms. All right, guys, so we're just written in the, the resistance value that we had for the RTD. And I've made a note that on the digital thermometer, I was reading 26 degrees. Next one, you, number four, it says, using the PT-1000 resistance chart, uh, convert the resistance value to a temperature. So we're at 1,099. So just scrolling up here, back to our chart here, we've got to find a value at 1,099. Okay, you can just see here, see if I can get the pen in here, um, that we've got 1,099, right? So, um, let's see, probably in between, right in between these guys, right here. Right? Let me see if I can circle that a little bit better so I'm not covering everything up. So we're just in that range right there. Okay, so 
if we scroll across here, we can see that it's at 20 degrees, right? And then uh, looking up, we've got 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, around 20, between 25 and 26 degrees uh, in the room. Okay, so you can see how accurate that chart is. And if we look back at uh, our value here, the ambient temperature in the room is 26 degrees. Awesome. So it's really accurate, that, uh, that chart. Okay, so we'll say between 25 and 26 degrees Celsius. Okay, so we'll drop that back onto page 7. So we have 1,099, 25 to 26 degrees Celsius from our chart from the PT-1000. Next page, it says, uh, compared to the TPI digital thermometer, is the reading from the RTD chart accurate? Oh, yes. Okay, using the kettle of the back of the lab, we're now we're going to boil up some water and we're going to place it in a styrofoam cup. And it makes, I've made a note here, obviously keep safety in mind and try not to knock the cup over at this point. So don't be a donkey, keep everything uh, nice and neatly set up. Uh, and let's get some bo boiled water and we'll take a look at the temperature. All right guys, so number seven. Uh, this is actually gonna be sample number five. So we're gonna pour our boiling water into one of the styrofoam cups. And then we're gonna insert the RTD and the digital thermometer and we're gonna try and get a resistance value off the RTD and we'll have our reference as the digital thermometer and we'll see whether they're accurate. Uh, we're gonna let the temperature equalize, so we're gonna leave it for a minute. Uh, and then we're gonna record the, the measured temperature and resistance in our table number two. So what I've done is I've set up uh, a number of different styrofoam cups here. So we've got the hot water, then we got two, three, four, and then finally our ice water. So we'll, we should see a gradual um, increase in, uh, in the temperature there. Okay, so I've placed the, the thermometer into the hot water, and now I'm gonna place the RTD in there. Again, try and keep everything stable. You can see that the, the temperature's gone up to about uh, 88 degrees now, and you can see the, the resistance value on the RTD just rocking it up here. So we're gonna leave this for a minute and let it stabilize, and then whatever resistance value you have on the RTD, we'll check the chart again and see whether it matches with uh, the temperature we have on the digital thermometer. All right guys, so I let it stabilize there and uh, I stopped at one point and I got 83.4 degrees C on my temperature, my digital thermometer, and then I was reading 1326 ohms. So let's double check that 1326 on the chart and we'll see what the converted temperature is. All right guys, so we're reading 1326 and our temperature on the, the digital thermometer was 83.4 degrees. So 1326 ends up around between these two values right here. And we can see that that is 80, right? And that's 81, 82, 83. That's between 84 and 85 degrees. So it is deadly accurate uh, with the resistance that we're reading and the temperature value that we're reading on our digital thermometer. Sweet, okay, so measured value was 83.4, our resistance was 1326, and from the chart we're reading 84 to 85 degrees Celsius. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is we're, we're gonna change from the hot water over to the ice bath. Okay, so we've got some ice that we've grabbed from the freezer, and again, we're going to drop the RTD in and we're gonna drop our digital thermometer in and we'll take a look at the temperature, but we'll leave it for a few seconds until it, uh, until it stabilizes here. You can see the temperature going down and if we look at the resistance value, the resistance value is dropping as well. So let's let it stabilize and then we'll take a reading. All right guys, so I've left it for a while. Remember that it was hot from uh, being in the boiling water, so it's gonna take a while to drop down. Looks like it's stabilized at around eight degrees now. And at eight degrees in the ice bath, then the resistance, remember at zero degrees, it's gonna be a thousand ohms. So we're now at 1,031 ohms at eight degrees. Okay, so we'll drop that in. That's gonna be our first sample there because we're gonna slowly increase the temperature for each of other, our other samples now. But we got eight degrees at 1,031. So let's look at the RTD chart and see what 1,031 gives us. Ooh, that's nice. Now look at that, we got uh, zero degrees here, so we're at the, 
zero degree column here. And if we move across, again, remember we were at eight degrees and at 1,031 ohms, oh, that's gorgeous, eight degrees Celsius, right on. Nice, so we're even more accurate than we were uh, at the higher end, actually. So now we've got uh, our ice water and we've got our hot water. And now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take a little bit of, like we'll do a 50-50 mix with hot water and the ice water for our sample number two. And then we'll take our temperature readings and see whether it matches with the chart again. Okay, so I've done a 50-50 mix there between the hot water and the ice water for my sample number two. The temperature that I'm reading on the digital thermometer is 35 degrees, 35.3, and my resistance is 1133 ohms. Okay, double checking with the PT1000 chart again. Remember that on this last one, our temperature was uh, around 35 degrees, and I had 1133 ohms of resistance. So you can see here that I'm in between these guys, and I'm at 31, 32, 33, and in between 34 and 35 degrees. Sweet, so there's my second sample there, 35.3 degrees Celsius, 1133 ohms, and from the chart, it was reading between 34 and 35 degrees Celsius, so we're still accurate there. Let's take two more samples. So what we'll do for sample number, number three is uh, we'll keep that same We'll just dump the water from cup number two into number three, and we'll add in a little bit of hot water to it. Okay, we're, so we're sample number three. We're about 75% full in the, the cup now. We've added in a little bit more hot water, and now we're at uh, 40 degrees. And my resistance now is 1155. Okay, so at 1155 on the PT1000 chart, you can see that we're deadly accurate at 40 degrees. So leave it for about 30 seconds, let the, the thermometer, which will react faster than the RTD set up, then let the RTD set up for about 30 degrees at that temperature, and then you should get a fairly accurate reading. So again, 1155 ohms is giving me 40 ohms on my PT1000 chart. Okay, so we'll drop that into the chart here. You can see that there, with the increase in temperature there, there seems to be a linear increase with the resistance there. So let's, for sample number four, let's add in just a little bit more hot water. We'll bring it right to the brim there. Uh, and then hopefully we'll get a temperature in between 40 and 83 there, and we'll get a resistance in between 1155 and 1326. All right, so what I had to do was I took a little bit more uh, hot water from the kettle and added it in there so I can get a decent uh, temperature. Uh, but right now I am at 49.3 degrees, and I'm at 1191 ohms of resistance. Excellent, it seems to still be working out for us. So we had um, 1191 there, and we were at 49 degrees, and you can see here, there, there's the, the 40 degrees, and as we go across from 40 to 49, then 1191 is just around 49 degrees. Awesome. Excellent, so these are my values. Your values will be different, because you're gonna have different amounts of hot and cold water in your samples. But you should see that as you get an increase in temperature, then you're also getting an increase in resistance as well. So what we'll do now is we'll take these values and we'll try and plot them out, and we'll see whether we get a linear increase in resistance. Awesome, so last thing we need to do is just plot these guys out. And uh, I actually have my doubts. I wasn't sure whether it was gonna give me a linear output here. But you can see here that once I've plotted my values in, so each of the, the resistance values are down here and my corresponding temperature readings in degrees Celsius or over here. And you can see that it's actually a nice linear increase in resistance as we go up from the ice water to sample two, sample three, sample four, and then finally our boiling water or close to boiling water. All right, guys, thanks for your patience. Hopefully everything worked out for you and you saw a nice linear increase um, and you're able to see that the RTD is simply a piece of platinum wire that as you heat up, it gives you uh, an increase in resistance. And we can see that based on that chart, we can plot out that exact resistance and get a pretty accurate reading of what the temperature is of the medium that we're looking at. All right, guys, thanks very much.